I'm gonna be scraping data from the Fox Sports website, but whatever I show you today can be applied to any website. And by the end, you'll be able to scrape and clean data that you find on the internet using Beautiful Soup, and you'll be able to save that data into your own local computer using Pandas. So with that being said, let's get into it. First, I'm gonna import the Beautiful Soup library by saying from BS4, import Beautiful Soup. And then I'm gonna also import another library called requests by saying import requests. And this is gonna let me access data from a specified URL. Then I'm gonna go down over here and I'm gonna create a new variable called page and set that equal to request.get. And then I'm gonna pass in the URL of the website that I'm gonna be scraping, which is this one, it's on tennis rankings. And so I'm gonna put single quotes and then do control V, which is gonna paste the URL. And so now I'm gonna create the basic soup object by saying soup is equal to beautiful soup and inside the method you pass in page.text and the second argument is html and this basically this code basically creates a basic soup object that passes in the python's built-in html parser so if i print out the soup then it's gonna give me all this html mess and so if i go to this website I do control shift I the code that I get over here is going to be the same as over here because this Python editor right now is accessing all the HTML information for this website. And from all of this, I'm going to be scraping the specific parts that I actually want. There's some trial and error involved when you're trying to scrape the data. You have to constantly go back and forth between the Python code and the HTML code because you have to make sure that you're getting the right HTML element. And this is going to make more sense as you keep watching this video. So on this website, I'm gonna right click inside anywhere in the table and then click on inspect because that's gonna automatically take me to the HTML part for the table. And so automatically I can see that each table row is held by TR elements because you can see as you hover over each part in the HTML code, it's being highlighted in blue on the web page. So if I scroll all the way up, and I hover over this part, I can see that this is the whole, this is what's containing the whole table. And so I need to pay attention to what kind of element it is. So in this case, it's a div element. And I can see that the class is equal to table wrapper. And I'm gonna have to know this because I'm gonna have to put this specific information inside the Python editor. So let me go do that. If I go hop onto the Jupyter Notebook, and I'm gonna create a new cell, and I'm gonna say that's equal to table is equal to soup and I'm going to use a method from beautiful soup called find and then inside the first argument I'm going to pass in t or not t I'm going to pass in div the div because you can see over here that this was a div element I need to be more specific so I'm going to pass in the class argument for the second one so I'm going to say class underscore and set that equal to the class name which was table wrapper and so if I print that out, then it's going to get all the information within all the HTML code within the, the table. So now I can use the new table variable that I created and I can scrape each row inside of the table. So I'm going to say table.findAll, which is another method from Beautiful Soup. And then I want to get the table row element. So I'm going to say tr and then this is going to pass me a list of all the TR elements. And so it's gonna be pretty messy. If I run that, it's gonna give me a really long list of everything inside this table along with the HTML, HTML code. So what my goal is, is I just want to, for now, I just want to get all of these column titles over here. So the player, country, 2022 rank. So I'm gonna, if I scroll up, I can see that the first entry of this whole list contains all the com titles because you can see player you can see the country 2022 ranks so that refers to the titles of this table and that's what i want so i'm gonna do square brackets and pass in a zero and that's basically just some simple indexing if i run that then that's gonna get me the content that i want but i still don't want any of the html code so i'm gonna do a simple for loop real quick but before I do that, I'm gonna create a variable and make this, store this into a variable called titles. And then I'm gonna create a new cell and then create an empty list called column titles updated. 
is equal to empty list and you'll see where I'm going with this later and so after I do that I'm gonna do four title in titles and I want to append each of the column titles or I want to add each of the column titles into the empty list called column titles updated so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say column titles updated dot append and so I want to pass in the title so I'm gonna say title and so now that should give me a list that has all the the column titles in it and so if I print that out then yeah so it gives me the list with the column titles but it still has the HTML code which I don't really want so I'm gonna say dot text and that's gonna get rid of all the HTML code but there's still some white space that I don't really want so all it takes is just one more method I'm gonna say dot strip and so if I run that then that, that list looks really good now because the each entry is really clean and it contains each of the column titles so I need to add these column titles into a new pandas data frame but I'm gonna save that for later in the video for now I'm just gonna do something else now that I scraped the column titles I gotta scrape each row in the table so I'm gonna use a for loop to do this so if I go back to the website I can see that each table row is contained inside the tr element because you can see that's highlighted in blue inside the web page so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to loop through each of these table rows so I'm gonna go back to the code over here and I'm gonna say I'm gonna do soup dot find all again and I'm also I'm gonna do tr like I did before and that's again that's gonna give me everything inside of this tape this whole table over here but the problem is that I don't want to get any of these I don't want to get any of these column titles so I want to exclude the column titles from this from what is returned from this line of code so I'm gonna say I'm gonna do some slicing with this list so I'm gonna say square brackets and I'm gonna put a one because that's gonna start out in the second element or the second entry of the list which is also the first row of the table so I'm gonna do one and then put a colon and then so this basically tells Python to get the whole list starting from the second entry of the list all the way to the end so if I run that now it starts at Novak Djokovic and you can see here that Novak Djokovic is the first table row and then from there on it goes all the way to the bottom of the table. So that's what I want. And now I'm going to store this inside a variable called table data. And now I'm going to create a for loop that's going to loop through this whole this whole list. So if I go to the website again, I can see that each of the table rows they have if I expand that you can see they have TD elements and so these TD elements they contain a value for each of the columns so I'm gonna go back into the Python code and then I'm gonna create a for loop I'm gonna say for row in table data and then I'm gonna create a new variable inside this for loop so I'm gonna say uh, row data is equal to row dot I'm gonna use the find all method again and I want to find the TD elements for each of the rows so that's why I'm gonna say TD this is gonna access all of the elements inside of the TD so for each row that I loop through it's gonna get all this information so after I do that I'm gonna create another list and I'm gonna say individual row data is equal to and I'm gonna do some list comprehension here so I'm gonna say You'll see what, why I'm doing this in a second. I'm gonna say data for data in row data. So if I do that, and then if I say print individual row data, I'm gonna get rid of this print statement later, but I'm just showing you this for now. So if I run that, it's gonna print out a list for each row in the table. So each separate list represents a row in the table. So for, for example, this, if I highlight this one, this is the first list in the for loop, and this represents the first row in the table. If I scroll down a bit, this second list over here, this represents the second row of this table, which is Carlos Alcaraz. And so now I have to I have to clean this list up a bit because right now it's really messy. You can see there's a bunch of unnecessary HTML code that I don't really want. 
So I'm going to do data.text and that's going to get rid of all the unnecessary HTML stuff. So now that looks a lot better, but there's still some unnecessary white space and this slash n thingy that I don't really know why it's there. So I'm going to say dot strip and that's going to make it a lot cleaner. And so this gives me a really nice list of all the table rows and there's no unnecessary HTML code or white space, but there's still actually one problem left. If I look at each of these lists, they all have six entries in them. But if I go up to the column titles list, this only has five entries. So this is actually gonna, we're gonna run to error if I create the pandas data frame. So I'm gonna, it's, it's a pretty easy fix. I'm just gonna add in a quick slicing for the list. So I'm gonna say one to the end of the list because I'm just gonna exclude all of these ranking numbers because I feel like it's self-explanatory by the points that are that's already included inside the list. So I'm gonna slice, I'm gonna exclude the rankings. So it's gonna start at the player name. And if I do that, now each of the rows, each of the lists has five entries in it and that matches with the column titles list. So now we're not gonna run into any errors when I create the data frame later. And that's actually gonna be the next step of this video. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna create a pandas data frame and save that into my local computer. To do this, I have to use the pandas library because I have to create a pandas data frame before I can save that into my own computer. So here's what it's gonna look like. First I'll create the, I'll import the pandas library by saying import pandas as pd because this is gonna let me, this is gonna give me full access to the pandas functions that I need to save the data into my own computer. So I'm gonna now do say df is equal to pd dot data frame. And this is the method that is gonna automatically create a new data frame for me. And so inside this method, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say columns is equal to, and th this takes in a list. So I'm gonna go up to here and I'm gonna paste in this list that I created before the column titles updated list that contains all the column titles. So what this line of code does, it basically creates an empty data frame that has all the column titles in it. So if I print out the data frame, you can see that it has each of the five columns, player, age, country, the rank, and the points. Now I'm gonna add the rest of the data into this empty data frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this for loop that I made before go down to this cell and then paste it. But now I'm gonna get rid of this print statement. So I'm gonna say, instead of the print statement, I'm gonna say the length is equal to the length len of df. And then I'm gonna say df.loc and inside the square brackets, I'll pass in the length. I'm gonna set that equal to the individual row data. So for each for loop, for each iteration in the for loop, it's gonna add the row, the individual row data into this empty data frame. So if I run that, and then if I print out DF now, I have all, all the player information, the points, and all the other data stored inside this data frame. I'll save this data into my own computer by only using one line of code. All I have to do now is say DF dot two CSV, which is a, pandas method and then I'm gonna pass in the name of the CSV file that I want to be called. So I'm gonna create a file name called let's say tennis rankings.csv. You could pass in whatever name you want as long as it's appropriate. And so if you if I run that that's gonna this is gonna create a new CSV file inside the same folder as where my Python program is. So if I go to my file directory and then if I go to, this is the program, this is the folder where my Python program is. So if I scroll down, then it should be, the CSV should be located here. So it's over here. Yeah, play rankings are CSV. And so now it contains, it has the CSV for the whole data frame that I created over here. And now I can do whatever analysis I want with the data. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button over here. And if you want to check out another video I made on another web scraping tip, but this time using pandas, and check out this two minute video over here. So hopefully I see you there and thanks for watching.